analysis portion of the Verisurf software, we're going to take the model that we reverse engineered in the previous part of the video and use that as a basis for collecting points to analyze the deviation between the points collected against the surface that was created. What I'm going to do simply is to go into our build module, which was also presented earlier in the video, and collect points on the surface of the park via that module. So by grabbing the arm here, I can go ahead and go to the surface of the park, and I'm going to grab just a few discrete points. Okay? As we can see on the screen, we've got a collection of points, much like what we had seen earlier in the build portion of the video. But what we're going to do now, instead of going and doing any type of reporting there, we're going to go to our analysis tool. Now, our analysis portion of the software allows us to see a number of different factors regarding the points that we just collected. For example, as you see on the arrows and the whiskers that are described, if we look at our settings menu, we currently are just showing the arrows and showing the normal of the arrows based on the points against the surface. If I select display whiskers, what we do then is we turn off the normal vectoring of the surface being just normaling out of the surface to being plus or minus based on the points that were collected. So if we unshade the model here, we should be able to see both the points that are being projected into the model being a minus deviation and the points projecting out of the model being a positive deviation and each of those values being shown as a label or a tag on the points. Also if you'll notice there's multiple colors here. We have the ability to do color mapping on deviation. In this particular case we have ability to do up to six colors. Now those six colors represents what's in tolerance above nominal below nominal, what's out of tolerance above nominal and below nominal, and then what's out of what we call the max envelope of acceptance or you know contour tolerance. So we have six different ways, six different colors that we can attach to that so that you can see and look for any specific color you may want. You can also boil that down to a little bit simpler method, but this covers kind of the gamut as far as what we might want to see uh, as deviation against the model. So in this particular case, we have some other selections on the screen as well. Let's look at what that looks like first of all as just whiskers of deviation. If I spin this, we can see that we have some arrows, again, pointing into the model and some pointing out of the model. If I back up to my settings now, and I want to say, let's see some balloons or tags for each of those models as exterior data, what I can do is zoom in and out. I can, again, shade the model. And we see these values that are out here on the screen and showing the max and min, or max above and max below, being colored as a border. So you see everything else is kind of within those, but you see the extreme on either end. We go back to the settings menu again. We can turn those balloons on or off. We can turn the IDs on and off. And uh, at this point, we have just the DX, DY, DZ, and the 3D value instead of an actual point number. If we go back and turn those balloons off, and we say we want to see some uh, failure flags, we can also see that type of information. Now, most everything here seems to be within the deviation, so we don't see any failure flags. But we have the ability to flag things out specifically by just telling it whether it's going to be within or outside of the tolerance or in or outside of the acceptable zone. Again, over here in the analysis tools, we see the functionality that we had earlier in the basic module, which is the use of MVD tolerancing and the ability to be able to pull those values in automatically. So if you had a number of different surfaces that had different contour tolerancing, all the points that are collected are going to be relative to those surfaces and in fact show you the deviation based on the MVD. So at this particular point now, I want to go back and say well, let's, let's get a little bit more creative with what we're seeing on the screen here. Let's grow those arrows a little bit so we can kind of see what really looks like there and maybe even be able to pick out what some of the major deviations are and which particular points they are. And also again, we can shade that. and see where it's going from and where it's coming from. Now if I shrink those arrows back, go back to my settings menu, there's other things here, like I said, this is going to be kind of a cursory view, but there's quite in depth amount of tools here on how we display the priority of the data, whether it's to surfaces or curves or notes. Okay? 
the ability to grab CMM data, for example, to compare against the model itself. For example, again, this can be an offline analysis tool that can be used without having to do it live with a, a device. If we want to, for example, do a best fit, and the best, best way to describe a best fit, especially for those people who are outside of the aerospace industry, this is, in aerospace industry, this is a fairly standard common practice. If you have a long wing skin, it's a long aluminum part, and a part of the uh, piece that you've machined is kind of potato chipped. It's kind of curled up a little bit because of the stress that might have been in the material. Essentially, you have 90% of that part still within tolerance, and you have this little bit at the end that might be out of tolerance because of this little lip up, right? Well, what if you were able to take the model and basically fit it within the envelope of tolerance? If you were to take the entire model and consider that there's this kind of a skin going all the way around it, a certain thickness, if you were to actually shift it around so it would fit within that envelope of tolerance, you'd still have a good part, even though the last inch or so were out of tolerance in its free state. So what we can do here is we can do best fit routine, best fit algorithms to determine how much we should shift the model to get all those points that were collected within that envelope. What it also gives you is if it can't quite get there, it'll do the best fit routine and then let you know where in the model you're still out of tolerance. So a very powerful tool there. Again, fitting, best fitting algorithm. The final part of the analysis tool is our reporting. Again, as in the report manager where we had the ability to do HTML, do Excel spreadsheets and all that, we'd have the same here. But what we're doing is, again, reporting information that is specific to point analysis of the points collected against the model. So we see not circles and arcs and lines, but we see actual point analysis between what the points were collected and what it is within the contour tolerance or volumetric tolerance of the part. And we see these numbers of points, again, numbered in the order collected, whether they're good or bad, the total number of points, the standard deviation summaries, and the quantity of the points collected. If there's any situation where you might want a different type of format, again, as shown earlier in the basic portion of the video, we talked about the report manager showing you the ability to create an Excel spreadsheet, we can do the same thing here. So if we create that report, we're going to see the same thing as we seen earlier, but doing a point analysis style report and giving us, again, in this case I'm using the Verisurf analysis, which is fairly in-depth. We have an actual delta nominal, there's tabs underneath, and we can scroll through those tabs to see the bell curve, distribution chart, etc. There's the picture. I hope in this entire video you've enjoyed some of the different aspects of it. Thank you for your time.